Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here with Ed Dumbill, who's the conference co-chair of Strata and Hadoop World. Ed, welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you, it's been quite the week, huh? Always a great guest. I really appreciate you know, everything that O'Reilly does for us and your time and Alistair's time. Uh, we didn't get Tim this week, but uh, you know, maybe next time, but uh, you are uh, you know, always been a fantastic friend. So uh, yeah, it has been a great week. Um, you know, I think back to the, the early days where theCUBE was here, in the early Hadoop world days, we've been mm -hmm. to you know, other Strata events. It's great to see those two come together. It's given a lot of new energy, hasn't it? It has, you know, I think one of the most important things is that Samantha Revich was saying this morning, is you don't need to develop the tools in isolation from the applications. And when I was creating Strata and the program, it's always the applications that are very important to me. And, and of course the tools are enabling, but these things need to happen together. And so bringing the conferences into one place makes a great deal of sense and it's brought a lot of energy. Yeah, and so, um, We've talked about a lot of the themes here. You've seen a, a lot about you know, bringing together some of the old world and the new world, a lot of discussion. You know, it's mm -hmm. kind of techie geek stuff, you know? Um, SQL and no SQL. Right. A lot of discussion about ETL or no t ETL. You're seeing a lot of the, um, the, the vendors sort of flexing their muscles. My way is better than this way, but it's all about the business value at the end of the day. You talk to the practitioners, they can solve these problems. You know, they, need, they, need, they need the tools, like you said, but it really is about the applications. And, we're starting to see that traction which we've been expecting now for several years, right? It is, I mean, one of the things I added to the show this year was our bridge to Big Data Day, mm -hmm. which was really all for you know, the IT organization and CIOs about how to start with a, uh, a big data strategy. And we started out at this top level. You know, we had uh, Bill Schmazo on, a favorite guest of yours. Yeah, um, <laughs> the dean of big data. The dean of big data, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he loves that. <laughs> and, and we started out, and he was very much at the, well, what, what are your company's aims, right? That's where he started. What are your, your goals? Look in the annual report. What's the CEO saying? Uh, and that's the kind of stuff that's got to orient your use of data. But then we drilled all the way to the bottom, you know, of enterprise data architectures. Because now there's enough, there's enough experience that we can say, start to say what real world Hadoop or in real world uh, Cassandra NoSQL enterprise data architectures look like. Yeah, I mean, I think that's great advice, right? All too often we focus so much on the technology, but it really does start with what are mm -hmm. those main business objectives and how do, how do we achieve them? The technology is almost the last decision that you, you have to make, at least in, in my experience in working with practitioners. Abs absolutely, uh, but as technologists, we can get it completely backwards half the time um, because we make some great tools. But the, the real important thing is that we understand, and this happens with data too, you can have a lot of data. Uh, but if you don't know what questions you're setting out to ask, it's just a lot of data, whether it's big data or small data. And some of the most important leader, leadership questions now are, you know, where are we going to look? What questions do we want to answer? What problems do we want to solve? These things are eternal, to be honest. You know, we're doing it with big data now, but these are, you know, really solid questions. Somebody asked me to ask you about the sensors. Oh, uh -huh. excellent, yes. So tell us about the sensors. Right, so I brought one of these gizmos in to show John yesterday. Yeah. Um, so I decided, it would be great to instrument the, the venue with the sensor platforms. Because what we want to do is really demonstrate the entire data science cycle. To start, we believe that big data uh, and important things to do about data reach out into the real world with sensors and you know, there's robotics and AI and all that stuff's coming down the pipe. But sensors are most important in industrial and retail and, and lots of control applications. So we had people, uh, a little crack team, creating these from Arduino, 50 sensors mentoring measuring uh, temperature, humidity, amount of people who walk by, noise level. Put them all around the venue. Now all that data is streaming on a wireless mesh network uh, up into the cloud, and that's been put up on, uh, on Amazon. And that data will be freely available for people to download and have a look at and try and visualize. Mix that up with the tweets, mix that up with photos you find from the event, with the schedule. Uh, we've got data from usage of our wireless access points. So I want to show data science from soup to nuts, right? From sensing to making sense. So um, wh where can we see that data? <laughs> <laughs> well, so um, the, it's up right now. We're sending in our newsletter. We're about to publish the location okay. for it. Yeah, but it's at, I think it's bit.ly.com slash sense lab. Okay. So bit.ly bit.ly slash sense lab will we'll do it. And that's the and it'll show us the outcomes <laughs> of your yeah, capture. Absolutely, and we're releasing analysis. all the source code on GitHub, 
We released the That's model awesome. for the enclosure. We 3D printed the cases. That source code's available. So everything's going up and people can download it's and do this. It's themselves. classic O'Reilly. You guys do such a great job at innovating and finding new ways, making us think about uh, such things. So uh, we're rejoined by uh, my co-host John Furrier. Welcome back, John. Great to be here. I was just, you know, I was just walking the hallway going bio break because we're going nonstop and, and um, Sharmila stopped me from Clear Story. She's like, I love the cube. You ask really good questions. I go, yeah, I've been around the block, but it's okay. She's awesome. She's truly a tech athlete. It's nice and, to, you know, what's great yeah. about the collaboration that we have is, you know, the keynotes are they're limited and they're great. They're you know, ten minutes and they're they're fast and and it forces people to really get their message across. You know, we can go deeper. You know, twenty minutes, sometimes longer, and it's uh, it's a I'm it's impressed. A nice by, I'm impressed by her. I'll tell you why. One, I mean, I thought her keynote was very tight. And, and, and it laid out the typical, you know, value proposition as a, a stealth mode company. But she has such good experience and she's been part of pioneering work at Kiva, um, right. those application servers, very strong pioneering work there. Uh, Netscape obviously you know, imploded kind of after she joined, but that was a whole other story. Uh, but they did the pioneering work. Opsware, um, we're doing cloud, that whole, whole cloud thing. So she brings a perspective. And one of the things we were talking in the hallway, Dave, and this kind of summarizes the show really is a point that I wanted to make at the wrap up was, the, the ecosystem is so dynamic. The Hadoop worlds, they're focused on this little box and looking at each, each other's moves, and yet there's a whole huge opportunity that data is creating that uh, is exposed now, that everyone is seeing, and it's beyond just the competitive movement and a space that they see. It's yeah. so massive, and, and I, th I think that they haven't really reflected the competitive strategies yet because the competitive strategy for these companies is no competitive strategy. There's enough room on the beach for everybody. Mm -hmm. And there's like, it's like huge real estate. Yeah. I mean, do you agree? I, I mean, agree, I think next year is going to be thrilling, right? Because of exactly these companies like Clear Story coming through, very compelling, that are just coming at it from the other end. They're starting, maybe, maybe starting at the business problems and moving inwards, uh, some of them. And I I'm really excited by a lot of the new companies. And what's more, they're not from unknowns, they're from real well-known people, like Joe Hallerstein, for instance, yes. Frank Factor, um, who've been in this game for a long time and really know how to meet the, the actual user's needs, so very exciting. You know, I have to laugh because we, we at Wikibon, Jeff Kelly, our lead big data analyst, did, last year took on the sizing of the market. It was a classic you know, sizing exercise, and I laugh because we're working on a premise at, at Wikibon and SiliconANGLE that practitioners are going to create much more value than the supply side. So right. a classic supply side so undercounts the value creation that is Absolutely. going on here. You you're not even going to be able to count this market. We kind of did it tongue in cheek. Yeah. We created some value because there's some market share data in there, but it's actually not countable in our well, view. It's right, yeah. you can count the market if you look at it as an as a analytic tool market, right? If yeah. you look at it the same way you did the BI market, That's right. you can maybe count it. But when you look at the fact that actually big data is a means of production, generating new value, driving whole new business and business units, that's not a candle market in, the, in that same way. It's just enormous. Yes. The other thing about O'Reilly that I want to point out to the group out there, um, this is our, I think, third or fourth strata. We've been involved in all the stratas. And, but one of the slogans that Maureen and uh, Gina and I were talking about is, O'Reilly is an integrated media company that work on things that matter. And, mm -hmm. and this data problem that we're having, and this is what Shamila pointed out is, is that, our own technology has created this data problem. And we, when we were on, we were talking about the Internet of Things, and mm -hmm. it's here, right? This is a, this is a serious problem. So uh, my friend Andy Kessler wrote an op-ed for the Wall Street Journal about um, computer science degrees back in, the, in, in our curriculum in, in, in high school and college. And it's the same math that was around when we went to build the Brooklyn Bridge. And so there was a call to arms for engineers to build infrastructure back in, 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 the, in the late 1800s. Now we need engineers to build new solutions to solve this data problem. This is right. a real problem, mm -hmm. right? So I believe that this data geek community is going to fuse quickly with the business community and, and Stratus kind of just bumped into this, I believe. And I think we talked about it on your segment about the bold move of uh, business and, and geek. And th I think this is just the yeah. beginning of a South by Southwest like experience where um, yeah, there's some cool people, there's some suits, but they're, they need to be together. That's been exactly what I planned from Strata or from the, the start. And actually, you know, for O'Reilly, that was a bit of a bold move for them it at the beginning because yeah. O'Reilly, typical, develop, you know, the audience you might have seen was developer, hacker, open source convention, another conference I chair. But, you know, going after the fact that there's business applications need to go side by side. It's not something somewhere we've been before, but it's turned out to be the exact 
the right thing because data yeah. is about people and organizations as much as it is about yeah. machines. And, and it's exciting and intoxicating at the same time, but there is a real problem. And that opportunity is, uh, from an entrepreneurial perspective and companies that have deep pockets have problems. This is like, mm -hmm. like we always say the enterprise is sexy, but it's not just the enterprise, it's government, it's society, but the enterprises right. just have this problem right now and they have deep pockets. So like, I know a lot of guys working on some consumer startup apps are like, oh, I don't have any traction. <laughs> Look at, stop what right. you're doing. Uh, and stop that game app, that, that right. casual game app, and move over. I am build. so I am so excited that people <laughs> are going to be building startups that do things and seem yeah. to have <laughs> value. Right now, I, I I love the fact that uh, enterprise uh, startups are uh, really on the rise. Yeah, awesome. Dave, what's your final thoughts so, on this? So strategy? I wanted to before I get there, mm -hmm. I wanted to uh, ask Ed. So what's next? Mm -hmm. Take us through. I mean, you guys are just. You know, you don't. You end and then you start. Absolutely, uh -oh. no rest, no rest for me. So give uh, us. I know it's your <laughs> head's probably just so full right now, but just give us an idea of what you guys are thinking for next. Well, time you around. know, let's look at 2013. Um, we'll be uh, there in Santa Clara in February. Uh, a couple of twists that we're bringing in there. I mean, several things. One, going to build on this whole uh, CIO IT organization approach because uh, that's definitely solid information that needs to be structured and get out there. Second, looking at switching around a bit how we treat UI and visualization, right? I don't want people to think they're just the pretty pictures. Someone this morning said, you know, design and visualization is the entire process. Every single user interface you touch while you manipulate the data is important. So that's going to be called a design track and really focus on that as a, a very important issue going all the way through. The other thing we're going to do is have a track called Connected World, which is going to bring together Internet of Things, mobile, um, sensing, and try and draw that story together. You know, what we like to do is when we sense something is coming up, rather than just put it in the grab bag, we try and find the story, knit it together. <laughs> we think it's called Connected World, not just the world reaching out into our data centers, but our data centers reaching back out into the world, communicating with us, now you, new UIs, Google Glasses, whatever, make that possible. Ed, we think, we really think highly of you. You've done a great job with Strata, one, in working with you and the, the program you put together, obviously, uh, directionally correct at this point. Uh, check, <laughs> golf clap. Um, <laughs> let's talk about your, your next uh, set of, I know you're going to stay with Strata and everything else, but you're doing some other work yeah. that I want to make sure we get on the record here because it's really important. You were talking in the, in the hallways on the day one, you're doing some, some real in-depth kind of curation and uh, building out of content. Can you share with the folks out there what this project is? I can, yeah, thanks very much. So, I'm actually taking on the role as editor-in-chief of a new peer-reviewed journal called Big Data. So this is you know, some academic, bridging academic, academia and industry. I want to bring the two together to report not only experience but new research. And the reason is uh, for this that I think if big data is to be more than a buzzword, more than one of these trends that we reflect, ha, do you remember the big data days? <laughs> <laughs> what a bubble. Right? Yeah. What a bubble, right? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, last night's party, what a bubble. Yeah. But <laughs> but what it needs, it needs some solid underpinnings, right? It needs theories, it needs uh, an integrated uh, There's a lot of work approach. to do. There's, there's a lot, a lot of, work. of work to do in making this, we know there's a thing here, right? Yeah. But we need to mark out where all the parts of the story are uh, and in a way that people who are contributing can have a forum. Because yep. right now, if you look, you've got district database people, they're over there, right? Social media people are over there. Uh, design or UX are over there. Government are over here. Uh, uh, securities over there, but we know that this is an integrated topic. Yep. Yes. And so that's the point of this, this journal. And also, a lot of R and D. Um, if you look at HP Labs, for example, mm -hmm. and IBM, and all the top companies, Intel, they have uh, a program where they work at academia. But I've always been yeah. critical. It's just been too slow. Um, so you don't have to replace it. Does it. You can accelerate it with a bridge. Yeah. And I think that's what your idea is, isn't it? That's it. Really, to kind of feedback loop between what's really going on and. Uh, What's what the researchers are doing? Quite often, what we're having finding out now. Look at Hadoop. Hadoop was deployed for several years before you had academics actually writing papers about what was going on and understanding it. So, just to kind of create that that culture uh, and sharing. The other thing is you find there's really nifty big data work going on. Let's say in astrophysics or biotech, right? Now these approaches can be transferred, I but because yes. they're only published in certain yeah, yeah. places, they're not out there. You're breaking down the silos. I want to. 
just like big data breaks down silos, yeah. I think yeah. this journal can break down. You know, silos. at SiliconANGLE, one of the things that Mark Hopkins and I always talk about because I'm I'm one of these students of journalism because I'm not a journalist. Mm -hmm. I never went to journalism school, but I'm in the journalism business. Business, and I'm looking. I've been looking at the disruption of journalism, and one of the things mm -hmm. if you look at like the newspaper business, like the New York, let's say the New York Times, for example, everything's organized by the science department, the science section. So you have right. silos. So what happens is you don't have that horizontal traverse because well, who makes a story selection for science if it's related yeah. to big data? So what's what I'm seeing is that those those walls have to come down, and this. blogging has brought that to the table, but blogging hasn't gone far enough. The most of the bloggers out there, uh, like TechCrunch, VentureBeat, all great for creating news stories, but they don't really say anything. They're not really providing right. provocative, in-depth coverage. I think there's a real demand for, for solid, real solid work, actually. It's uh, kind of a kickback against exactly this breakdown that's, that's happened. Yeah, yeah. There's one thing I wanted to mention to you that was, uh, I'm excited about, about the Big Data Journal, is that we're publishing open access. So this is important. Uh, there's a lot of disruption going on in, in academic journals. This means that all the research papers are free for everybody to get, right? No need to subscribe to the yeah, journal good. to do that. Open source. And we're going to make them free for authors to publish. So some open access journals require authors to pay to cover the costs. We're not doing that either. We believe that the only way that an integrated dialogue can happen is if the information is, is accessible to people in industry and who can yes. search for it on the web as to people in universities who've got it through their packages and their libraries. Well, we will certainly cover it on SiliconANGLE TV because our goal is to cover where all the action is. If it's boring, we won't cover it. If it's a lot of action, we'll cover it, so <laughs> I'm sure you'll make it not well, boring. Well, I'm very glad I'm here. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> okay, Dave, anything else you want to say as to well, wrap I'm up? I'm very excited about the, the February Strata, uh, especially, particularly the CIO you know, track. Cause that's my crowd, you know, mm -hmm. and they've been, they've been now, now they're dying diving in, lots of planning going on, and they're trying to figure it out, and so I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. thrilled to, to see you well guys I have Mark guiding that, yeah. that crew. Mark Madsen, John Ackred are, are kind of leading the charge on that, so uh, if you know those guys. Yeah, yeah, so fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. that's, very that's much, a wrap yeah. for Strata. We are excited to end an amazing data, big data week. Started out for us here in uh, Vegas with I information on demand. Started for O'Reilly and the team here early, probably last week setting up. Um, I really did a great job. You guys did good. Great, Maureen. Yeah. Shout out to Maureen Jennings, making it all happen for us, and uh, all the great support from O'Reilly, Cloudera, MapR, top sponsors, and uh, of course, we're excited to share all the content with you for free. Uh, go to YouTube.com/SiliconAngle for all the videos and uh, Big Data Week. Uh, my my prediction is going to be like the South by Southwest for data geeks for meeting in intersecting with business. Um, Maybe New York City might be a little pricey for those kinds of uh, that crowd, but maybe maybe we can get some discount on hotels next time. But um, been a great week. Thanks, guys. Dave, Mark Hopkins, and our new guy over there. Thanks so much, Kenny. Uh, Kenny, <laughs> new guy. <laughs> Where you go, new guy? <laughs> the new guy <laughs> over there. You know, we're, we're good. And I, and uh, all the people back at the ranch, Kristen, all the bloggers, uh, blocking away and everything. Art Lindsay, um, Jeff Kelly, to leave early, and Stu Miniman. So everyone, thanks a lot for watching. That's a wrap from Strata Big Data Week in New York City. See you next time.